In the past, Honda made the Moto Compo, and it was great. Legendary, in fact. And now, what do we have but the revival of the Moto Compo? Yeah, it's not coming from Honda, but this clearly was designed directly after a Moto Compo, and I'm really excited about it, because, yeah, we've, uh, we've been stoked for a Moto Compo thing to arrive. When the Navi was announced, we thought that was going to be a little Moto Compo sort of thing. Well, yeah, because we knew wasn't. that news was coming on a small mini moto from Honda. We were hoping that the Navi was going to be the Moto Compo. We've been hoping for such a long time that Honda was going to bring it back. Now, a company called Icoma has gone and done what Honda has yet to do, which is bring back the idea of a Moto Compo in a motorcycle called the Tatamel. And this is another motorcycle uh, bit of news that's come out of CES, but likely the most exciting motorcycle news that's come out of CES. Yeah, I think this is the most exciting thing in general to come out of CES. Uh, yeah. And it actually won an innovation award at CES. So it's a real thing that a lot of people had eyes on and oh, yeah. people are really excited about. Yeah, and there's actually a date and a price set for when this should be here in the US and how much it'll cost. And we'll leave that to the end of the video because there's a lot of exciting specs on this motorcycle that we have to talk about, or maybe scooter, because it's more of a moped classified vehicle. So 600 watt electric motor, 0.8 horsepower, uh, but it can produce two kilowatts or 2.7 horsepower in short spurts, 25 mile per hour, top of speed, 19 miles of range. So you compare that to the Moto Compo back in the day, it had 2.5 horsepower, around about a 20 mile per hour top speed. So this is a bike that's meant for you to go short distances, inner city. Um, it's kind of like, uh, almost like what you would use a bird scooter for, but it's way better. Right, it's yeah, a little portable thing you can throw in the back of a car very easily, probably not strap it down and then get you the last couple miles you need to go once you park your car in a city. Uh, as far as battery, we have a 51.2 volt battery, 12 amp hour battery, charges in about three hours from a regular 110 outlet. Um, and they say they do have plans, future plans for bigger batteries up to 29 amp hours. So they're gonna more than double the battery capacity on this bike and that should more than double the range. Yeah, so. and impressive considering that even with that bigger battery, it should still fold up with the same packaging. So. The bike is expanded, obviously, as you ride it, but then you can fold it down to be only 10.2 inches wide and 27.2 inches long. It's kind of a square package. So if you look at like the Moto Compo back in the day, it folded up to be shorter than this, but it remained longer. This folds up into a slightly more square package. And the way that this motorcycle collapses, folds, unfolds is mesmerizing to watch. It's like origami. It looks like kind of a I mean, not necessarily a complex process to perform, but the mechanics of how it folds and unfolds are impressively sophisticated. Yeah, I it's mean, definitely a lot more sophisticated than the original the Moto Compo. Slides onto basically the swing arm. Yeah. And then the other cool thing, so it is 110 pounds when it's folded or unfolded. It's the same weight all the time. It's 110 pounds, which is 10 pounds more than the Moto Compo was back in the day. But to help you move it around, it's got some little skateboard wheels on the back so that you can grab the handle on the front and wheel it around like a suitcase. Yeah, so very easy potentially to move around. And a lot of these parts are 3D printed. I think they said the skateboard wheels on the back are 3D printed. And also a lot of these side panels are 3D printed as well. Uh, so the actual frame of the bike is made out of aluminum, which is good to keep it lightweight. So you could actually lift this thing into the trunk of a car if you need to. Um, but they have a lot of lighter weight 3D printed parts like the side panels where you see the Icoma logo on the side in yellow. Those are removable and you can pull them off and they're showing off some some different styles. <laughs> some of them are pretty interesting. Yeah, so you can obviously have a, a colorful side panel in some different colors, retro, whatever. The interesting thing is that they've got a wooden sided one, a little strange. Um, even more strange is that they have a grass sided one that looks like a bit of AstroTurf, basically. This custom one's pretty cool, too, yeah. before we get to the other one. This one just looks a little more futuristic, little knobby more tires, and doesn't have that square panel to yeah. make it look like a Moto Capo. It's got more of a, a modern shape into it. But here's the really interesting one, is the one that looks like a, a sofa cushion. Yeah. It's leather. 
It's super a weird. A leather motorcycle. I don't understand this. I think that's hilarious. That would hilarious. actually probably be pretty comfortable for you to yeah. rest your legs against. It definitely would be comfortable. I don't, I don't know, know how durable it would be. I don't think it would be durable. I mean, I, there's leather on motorcycle seats, and they're exposed to the... That's to the true. Element, so <laughs> I've just never seen anything like that. Leather but side panels on a motorcycle. Honestly, if I were going to buy one of these, it probably would You'd be that one. you go for the grass? Yeah, no, I'd go for the leather one, e- even though what. it's so weird. You get the leather one, I'll get the grass one. Let's do it. Although, I would have a hard time not picking this adventure model on the left that's got a shovel on the side of it. Yeah, a little um, pelican case in the rear. And... Yeah, not sure what you would be doing with your Tatamel that would require you to have a shovel on hand. But maybe if you use it as a camp bike, you could potentially put some slightly knobby tires maybe on it. So it's got got a a round headlight too. It's the only one with a round headlight. So it's got a 10 inch front wheel and a six and a half inch rear wheel. So I don't know what tire options are like (laughs) for a six and a half inch. Exactly. That's the first thing that went in my mind is what tires are going to come on this and where are you ever going to find replacements for a six and a half inch rear wheel? Yeah, um, but they, I don't know if they're going to have exist. to make their own tires. I'm sure somebody makes a six and a half inch yeah. tire. The other cool thing about this bike is it's got USB ports. So one of the things they're advertising is that this is a good bike to take camping with you because you can kind of get around your campsite, but it also acts as a battery bank. So if you're on like a two, three night camping trip, um, you have this to get you around a couple miles, but also you can use it to charge up your phones and, you know, power some other accessories, Bluetooth speakers, that sort of thing. So the other nice the thing camping companion. about taking this camping would be the fact that it's electric. So you're not going to be disturbing anybody with the sound of even a small dirt bike because that noise carries and unless you're in a really secluded camp spot um, you're going to have a hard time ripping around on a gas-powered motorcycle Uh, but this this wouldn't have that issue the other nice thing too is that it does have suspension so if you were riding on a little dirt road or something i mean it's not a dirt bike you don't have 10 inches of travel or anything but uh, you do have a conventional fork up in the front, so you've got a little bit of suspension. Does it have rear suspension that we were able to see? Yeah, it does have. Look at that. A little rear ah. shock right there. Mono shock. This is more sophisticated than any motorcycle I own. Yeah, the other cool thing is... Wait, uh, is it a conventional fork or inverted? That is a... It looks like an inverted fork. It does kind of look inverted. But a really skinny, small inverted yeah, fork. as to be expected. Um, also some other cool things they're showing off with it is obviously the many different color combinations. They have this one matched to a desk and showing that you can fit this under your desk. So So the wood finish, it could be like a piece of furniture in your house. There you go. Um, also I was talking about kind of power delivery with your phones and stuff. Read this. They're saying that, um, it can be used as power, a power source for disaster prevention, but also digital signage using the side panels. So, um... You know, you can have, like, light-up side panels on this thing yeah. that display different messages and so advertisements. If you saw this bike at CES, they were showing off one of the ones that had the screen on the side of the bike, which initially, when we saw, thought was a little ridiculous. But the bike itself, because I, I, I wouldn't pay for a screen no. on the side of my bike, but everything else is really cool. But I could see, you know, you own a coffee shop and you have a cool, like, old-school Volkswagen bus outside with your logo on it, and you have a light-up Motocompo sort of thing. You could ride your coffee menu into work. Exactly. There you go. They also are showing off this little, like, fleet management box. I don't know what you'd call this thing, but it's a solar-powered box that I guess will handle charging for all of them and neatly stores three of these bikes in there. Probably charging over the course of a couple weeks because those are really small solar panels. I'd be surprised if they can do much more than power that screen. You're a hater. (laughs) I love this bike. I don't know about solar charging it, but the bike itself I would love to get. Should we talk about the price? Yeah, I'm really excited about the price. Yeah, so this this is actually one of the best things about it. $4,000, which especially in terms of a innovative, cool, funky designed electric bike is really not bad. I get that you can buy a brand new Grom for $4,000. Is that better value? Yeah, it is. That's more bang for your buck, 110%. But if you want something that's cool, a little bit more out there and electric, four grand. This is pretty badass. I disagree with you that the Grom is more bang for your buck. I mean, this is mini moto pricing. 
We're talking about mini moto. A lot more bang for your no. Money. We're it's mini moto pricing. It's four thousand dollars. It, we don't what know. is the range? We don't know. What is we don't the top know. Range? We don't know. We haven't tested it yet. Where you can't just take their word for all this stuff. But yeah, that's true. The the point I'm trying to make is that when you buy a Grom, you're buying it because it's a fun, unique bike that back in the day, yeah. I guess, not a lot of other people had. Now everyone has a Grom, but it, you bought it because it was a, a cool bike that has a story to it, and people ask you totally. about it. This is the same thing. People are going to be yeah. constantly bugging you about oh, this, 100%. asking you what it is. So if that's why you're buying a mini moto because you want a standout bike that no one else has, then this is a better value than the Grom, in my opinion. The way I see it is you literally get a lot more bike for the money with a Grom. This is a much cooler bike for the money. So it just depends on what you want. If you're looking for your first motorcycle, you should probably get a Grom. If you're looking for something totally different, unique to have in your garage, maybe ride around your local neighborhood, go to friends' houses, this, this is going to be the more interesting thing for you to have. And the other impressive uh, thing that they say about this bike's delivery is that it should be expected here stateside in April 2023. So not far out. We'll see yeah. if they hit that date because that seems like a, a pretty aggressive goal. That's coming up fast. That is coming up real fast. We'll see. Um, like we said, they were, you know, people were looking at them in person at CES here they were in the there. States. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, no matter which way you slice it, $4,000 for a brand new electric bike with this much of a unique folding design. That's a good price. Yeah. So uh, I'm really I, excited I about this. I think it's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, let us know what your thoughts are on the Ecoma Tatamel bike down in the comments. I almost called it the Coma because their logo. Their has logo the does I look C. like a K. Yeah, the I and the C are, are really close together. Um, but anyway, really cool bike. Let us know your thoughts, and uh, yeah, we'll keep you up to. Oh, oh yeah, we oh, haven't seen Oh, they got it in the back yet. of a K van. Perfect. If you don't know, I have a 1995 Suzuki Every that looks uh, pretty similar to that. Yep. I need that's one of these. this is gonna be you very Yeesh. soon. Yes, it will be. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next video. Damn, dude. They got it in the cave <laughs> Yeah, that's tight.